Now when it comes to making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to share with you four rules that will increase our duas being accepted and making sure that we're doing it in the proper format. ta'ala. Etiquette number one, my dear brothers and sisters, is the importance of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of the dua. So you look at the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in Surah Al-Fatiha. And you notice that half of Surah Al-Fatiha is dedicated to praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You start off with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the universe, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the owner of mercy and the giver of mercy. Maliki Yawmiddin, master of the day of judgment. All of this is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And similarly, when we call out to Allah, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our needs, it is not befitting that we just call out to Allah like we would call out to anyone else. But rather from the etiquettes of calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are to praise Him just like He taught us to praise Him. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He teaches us something very, very beautiful. And that is when it comes to praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot praise Him as He deserves. And the best praise is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised Himself. So we hear the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying when he used to make dua, وَلَا أُحْسِثْ ثَنَاءً عَلَيْكَ أَنْتَ كَمَا أَثْنَيْتَ عَلَى نَفْسِكَ that, oh Allah, I am unable to enumerate your praises. You are as you have praised yourself. So the importance of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your duas. Number two, the importance of sending salah and salam upon the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our predecessors have taught us that when we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't send salah and salam to the messenger of Allah, then that dua stays suspended between the heavens and the earth. That is as if it is insufficient and incomplete. And when you send the salah and salam upon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that is when that dua is fulfilled and it reaches the skies so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer it for us. So that is the second etiquette that when you make dua, send salah and salam upon the Messenger of Allah. So now a person may ask, when you pray Salah and you're making Dua in Surah Al-Fatiha, you're not sending Salah and Salam at that time. But my dear brothers and sisters, your whole Salah is one big act of Dua. And that is why in your Tashahud and in the last Raka'ah, you will send Salah and Salam upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that Dua may be fulfilled. Number three, that you make Dua with an attentive heart, a Dua filled with emotion. Not a dua that is heedless, where a person is not even conscious of what they are saying. And this is something very relevant in our times, where a lot of us may not be native Arabic speakers, and we have memorized certain duas in the Arabic language, but we're not truly sure of what they mean and what they represent. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made it compulsory upon us to make dua in Arabic alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of the universe, understands all languages. So the language that you speak, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that language to make sure that you're attentive, to make sure that your heart is actually into it and that you're not just delivering lip service. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need your lip service. He is not in need of your worship. But what you need is an attentive heart, a heart that is present when it is calling out to the one that created it a heart that it will only be fulfilled when it reaches out to its Lord and Creator. A heart that will only be content when it connects with the one that created it. So have an attentive heart when making dua and do not just do simple lip service. If you want to make dua in Arabic, then learn the words of the Arabic dua and make sure you understand them so that your heart can connect and your mind can connect to that dua bi ta'ala. And the fourth and last point I want to share with you, my dear brothers and sisters, is when making dua, a lot of us unfortunately will have this tendency to make dua only for the life of this world. So for example, we'll ask Allah, Oh Allah, please let me get into the master's or PhD program. Or Oh Allah, please grant me a job. Or Oh Allah, please grant me assistance. Oh Allah, please grant me a spouse. Now all of these duas within of themselves are perfectly fine, they're legitimate. But where the problem lies, my dear brothers and sisters, 
is when we restrict ourselves only to the life of this world. And I want you to look at the story of Adam and Iblis. Look at the story of Adam and Iblis. Adam alayhi salam, when he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked Allah to guide him, to teach him what he should say. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him the beautiful dua, Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin. That, oh Allah, we have wronged and oppressed ourselves. And if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, then surely we shall be from the losers. And I want you to look at the example of Iblis. Iblis had an opportunity to make dua for whatever he wanted. But he only made one dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Rabbin dhirni ila yawmin yuba'thun. That, oh Allah, give me life till the day of judgment. That's all he wanted. He didn't want Allah's forgiveness. He didn't want Allah's guidance. He just wanted life till the day of judgment. And this teaches us a very valuable lesson. And that is that the prophetic model of making dua is that the emphasis should be on spirituality and the hereafter. Whereas the satanic model of making dua is to emphasize only on the life of this world. So this is something for you to reflect upon and myself to reflect upon. That are we making enough dua? And when we make dua, what is it actually for? Is it for the life of this world or for the life of the hereafter? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He teaches us the ideal way to make dua. In Surah Al-Baqarah, He teaches us that from the best of duas is to say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ That, O oh, our Lord, grant us good in this life and grant us good in the hereafter and save us from the punishment of the hellfire. So if you look at this beautiful dua, my dear brothers and sisters, you'll notice that it encompasses both the life of this world and the life of the hereafter. But where is the emphasis? The emphasis is on the life of the hereafter. Because you're saying, Oh Allah, grant me good in the hereafter and save me from the punishment of the hellfire. And that is the equation that you should try to live by. That for every one thing you ask from this world, ask for two things of the hereafter. Whether it be Allah's forgiveness, whether it be punish, save, saving from the punishment of the hellfire, to have a higher rank in paradise. Whatever it may be, make the akhirah your focus.